This week, tens of thousands of OSU graduates and fans will gather in Stillwater for America's greatest homecoming. And at the end of the week, Boone Pickens Stadium will come alive with Cowboy football. It takes an amazing team to make the day a success. And in this case, we're not just talking about the team on the field. Game day at Boone Pickens Stadium resembles a carnival. There are tents, bands, crowds, and food, and more food. On seven Saturdays this year, the north end of the Stillwater campus is energized by the sounds of the paddles hitting the wall and the players hitting the field. But a party for 60,000 people doesn't just happen by accident. For every Cowboy football player on the field, there's 17 additional team members. Their head coach, Marty Sargent, the Senior Associate Athletic Director in charge of game day operations. What we do is, you know, this is a team effort, a big team effort. Uh, we've got a lot of good people that take a lot of pride in, in what they do here. How many bodies are involved in all that? I think this would probably surprise some people, but we're probably talking in excess of 1,800. And what, what all areas are they covering? Uh, ticketing, um, media relations, police, safety, fire. Uh, food. Food, um, uh, just event staff. It's, it's a big group. Sargent says the goal of his team is to ensure that the fans have a safe and enjoyable experience. It requires extensive coordination and cutting edge technology. We're actually sitting in our um, emergency service command post um, uh, that watches over uh, everything on game day. And in this room, you know, we have individuals from um, OSU and Stillwater Fire, OSU uh, and Stillwater Emergency Management. Uh, we have other local, state and federal law agencies in here. And the biggest threat doesn't come from man, but from nature. If the storm escalates, then we'll start putting messages up on the video board and PA announcement, you know, warning people that we have severe weather coming towards still water. Making sure everything goes off just right on game day is a week long effort. Sergeant's day starts before sunrise and ends long after sunset. Does he actually watch the game? I get to watch it all, but I don't remember very much of it uh, because we're always looking at crowds. You're looking for different things than where the football's going. I remember a few plays, but most of the time, like last week's game, I don't rem I remember very little about the game. Larry Reese's job as a public address announcer is to watch the game for everyone in the stadium. Reese is celebrating 25 years of having his voice echo through the stands. Got to school here in 1989 and went right into journalism and broadcasting. You know, uh, uh, I knew early on, and I, as my high school days were winding down, God didn't give me the ability to keep playing, and I was always an avid sports fan, so I had to find a way to stay around athletics, and I decided journalism and broadcasting would be the way. Fans hear Larry Reese throughout the game, but what happens after touchdowns is Reese's signature call. Uh, when they put me up in the booth, I, I just noticed that this, I, I think it's one of the one of the coolest thing in collegiate sports. I mean, across the board, uh, to have a bullet run onto the field and, and, you know, kids of all ages love it. It's not just for the kids. I mean, every one of us love it because it means something good happened for Oklahoma State. We've scored a touchdown. Larry invited us up to his booth so I could give it a try. 
As you'll see, he's in no danger of losing his job. So this is the actual microphone you use. Yeah, right? this is the microphone we use on, on game days. And you know, Mr. President, the public address is really about exciting our fans. Right. So uh, I want you to, you know, put a little behind it, but we're going to have you try. Oh, you want here, me to do I it? want you to do, here comes Bullet. And, you know, sometimes it's, here's Bullet, like uh, Ed here's McMahon Johnny. used to do, yeah. here's Johnny. Yeah. And then sometimes it's, here comes Bullet. So maybe we'll have you try both. You just press that button down there. But again, it's all about the excitement and the inflection in your voice that's going to feed to our fans. Yeah, and the fans are going crazy anyway because we've scored. That's right, but you can get him to another level. I know you can. Okay, I'm gonna try it. All right, here okay. we go. Here's Bullet. I like it. I like it. Now give me a. Here comes Bullet. Here comes Bullet. I think you got it. So <laughs> if there's ever a time I can't be here again, yeah. you're coming in. No, no, no. <laughs> Won't you do it for everybody? Just uh, showing how how it works. All right. Here comes Bullet. The voice of the master. <laughs> but the voice of the master was nearly silenced. Last fall, Larry had a lymph node that was swollen. A trip to the doctor would confirm his worst fears. Always in the back of my mind, I thought throat cancer would be the worst thing that I could get, you know, because I love being able to use my voice for my alma mater. And so uh, when I was diagnosed, I mean, the first thing, when you hear cancer, it's a kick in the gut and it's the, it was the scariest thing I'd ever heard. And, uh, you know, I put my head down for a second, my wife, Jimmy, in, in the doctor's office hugged me and we hugged it out for about 90 seconds. And then I started thinking about our coaches versus cancer kids. And I was always emotional about introducing those kids at basketball. And, but I got inspiration from them. I thought, if those kids can do it, I've got to toughen up here. And they inspired me to just 90 seconds later start fighting. Coach Holder and I called Boone and I said, Boone, I got one chance at this and I want to watch my daughter, uh, uh, I want to walk her down the aisle, I want to watch her grow up, I want to be here for my parents, I want to grow old with my wife and I got one chance at this. And I said, oh, by the way, Boone, I'd like to call games at our alma mater for another 25 years. And, Boone's such a great supporter, but he's also a member of the family. And he said, he goes, Larry, I'd have been mad if you hadn't asked. And he goes, by the end of the day, MD Anderson will know who you are and you'll be in good hands. And two hours later, after he made the call, MD Anderson was calling me, getting me in. We're happy to report Larry is in remission and ready for many more years of thrilling the home crowd. And here, here, here. For those who can't make the game, Tuning in to the Cowboy Radio broadcast is the next best thing to being there. Welcome to the, welcome to the hub. The epicenter. Yes, where, uh, where things happen. Dave Hunziker is the radio play-by-play -play announcer for Cowboy football and men's basketball. It's his voice that carries Cowboy football around the world. Well, I started Oklahoma State in 2001 fall of 2001, so this is year number 15, and uh, it's it's been an amazing run here. Because we've been winning. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. The announcer's great if you're winning. If uh, you're losing, they may not be so great. And winning is right. Since Dave arrived, OSU has played in a bowl game every year but two. And this year, the team has qualified for its 10th consecutive bowl game, a record for OSU football. Winning may make great announcers, but preparation makes great sportscasters. Well, it's really more of a, of a week in that, you know, really it starts on Sunday. I'll start doing some reading. I print off all the stat books from all our opponents coming up and organize them. They all have their own, each team has their own binder, their spiral binder where everything goes. But Monday is pretty occupied with media day. We tape Coach Gundy's television show. We have his radio show. Tuesday, Wednesday are my practice days. And then Wednesday, I try to block off. Wednesday, I try to schedule very little, if nothing, and I just sit in my office at my house and do nothing but read and work on my charts. Thursdays, we meet with coordinators in the morning, meet with Coach Gundy and record his pregame interview. We're fortunate. I'm not sure how many radio guys get to do that and have the access that we have, but our coaches have been wonderful to us over the years. Friday is the chill day, uh, at least in the morning. The morning, I try to take for myself and then just clean everything up and getting the pregame show ready on Friday night, and uh, then it's game day. Uh, this is, so this is your chart? Yes, and there are two charts for each game. Right. You'll see in this case our offense and Central Michigan's defense, and then vice versa, their offense and our defense. And it's laid out so that the quarterbacks get the most, obviously the most space. Receivers are here, your running backs are here, offensive linemen up top, 
tight ends over here, your punter and place kicker. So for Mason Rudolph, you got broke, broke red shirt in week 11 last season, led OSU to two and one record as a starter. Yes, you know, and, and also you'll see with him, you know, father played football in North Carolina, was on right. Sam Ritigliano's staff at Liberty, mother ran track at Liberty. So stuff like that that's, that's interesting. With his radio partner, John Holcomb, the producer engineer, spotter, statistician, and stage manager, the booth gets full. We were allowed to point a camera on Dave as he called the game. You'll notice, just like our fans, he's not always in his seat. Hand off to Taylor up the middle. Darts to his left of the 45. To midfield, it's hit around the loose. Back to the sideline, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. He's in. Pistols firing. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. 58 yards for Raymond Taylor. Just as here comes Bullet is a staple with fans in the stadium, pistols firing is the sign to the radio audience that the Cowboys have put six on the board. Whenever we score, Pete, Pistol Pete, fires his pistol. I gotcha. You know, that's, that's a celebration. And the reality is this, it doesn't probably ever take off, but it did because we were winning. Yeah. Could have said anything, could have said there's a three-legged goat on Main Street. We were, because we were winning at such a high rate, at a level we'd never won before, I, hey, they, people were just excited. It, they were, and they should have been, and they still are. So it's, you know, that, that's the reality of it. You, 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 things like that take off because your team's successful, because you have great players doing extraordinary things, because you have coaches that are among the best in the country. You know what, that just uh, makes everybody's job easy, and sometimes, uh, Things like that catch on. If you're going two and nine, I have a feeling those things don't catch on quite so much. November will be electric at Boone Pickin Stadium. The Cowboys will host TCU, Baylor, and of course, the Bedlam game with OU on Thanksgiving weekend. To learn more about what goes into preparing for these games, you can see our extended interviews with Marty Sargent, Larry Reese, and Dave Hunziker on O State TV. I'm Burns Hargis. See you next time on Inside OSU. Oh,